Good morning once again. Thank you all for joining. Uh, good to see you. I hope you all are doing well. Um, wonderful to see you. Hi, everyone. Hi, Daniel. Hi, Pratt. Hi, Lucy. Sam, Sanjay. Good to see you. Cyril. Hi, hi, hi. I hope you can hear me uh, well and uh, and see me well. Awesome. Okay. Great. Okay, let's pray and uh, we'll get started. Jesus, we look to you this morning beautiful Savior, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, uh, the ancient of days, we love you. We honor you in this place. We welcome you in this place. Holy Spirit, we lift our eyes up to you. Uh, we give you complete permission to come and do what you do best. Move among us, breathe over us, I pray. Even as we uh, learn and study, about ministering, healing, and deliverance. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would you would fill us, uh, you would empower us and equip us uh, as we study, Lord, as we look into your word as well. Um, continue to pour out your wisdom over your children, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Great. Um, so we've completed chapter one. Uh, we started with chapter two in the last class and um, you know in the in chapter one we looked at the biblical reasons as to why we need to minister in you know why is it important to minister in healing and deliverance uh, we we looked at so many other things right that it displays god's nature it, it reveals god's power his glory his greatness and so many other reasons right um and so that's one of the reasons why not one of the reasons, that's one of the many reasons why we minister, right, in healing and deliverance, okay? The word minister or li the literal meaning of that word minister means to be a cup bearer. That means to serve, okay? The literal meaning of the word minister is a cup bearer. To minister that's what a cup bearers do isn't it like how nehemiah was holding a cup he was a cup bearer behind standing behind the king right he would serve a waiter basically and so um it's very important for us to serve in healing and deliverance okay so sometimes what can happen is that when we use the word minister uh it can sound a little complex okay that ministry is only for this person that ministry is only for that person uh, but it simply means to serve, isn't it? Like you come and serve tea to me. That's what it is. It's, it's, you go to, you see a person in need, and you go serve, and you introduce Jesus to that person. That's all it is, isn't it? So that's what we looked at chapter one. Okay, the importance of ministering in healing and deliverance. Um, we'll do a quick recap of what we covered in chapter two. Actually, let's look into it a little deeper. So, all good? Yes. Right. So. Chapter 2, it talks about God's word on healing. That means this chapter, we are going to focus on what the word of God, the Bible, has to say about healing. Okay? So we start off by looking at the source of sickness, disease, and ailments. Uh, what is the meaning of source? Source. What is the meaning of source? S O U R C E. Look, yeah. Origin, okay. Um, okay, what is the source of River Ganga? Where does it start? Do you know? Huh? In the Himalayas? In the Himalayas, yeah. So. That's where it begins, isn't it? That the, so the source of the river Ganga is at the Himalayas, at, at the at the valleys, right? So that's where it begins, okay? Uh, not in Varanasi, right? It's it passes through uh, the city uh, of, of Varanasi, but it does not begin there, isn't it? There ha it has many tributaries, but the source is where it begins, right? Where it comes from, 
yeah so when we say the source of sickness disease and ailments that means we are talking we are looking at where does it come from what is its origin okay that's what we we're, we're looking we started off we're looking at and and so we looked at when god created the world the universe everything he did was perfect how do we know that because god said it was good right uh, he didn't need, he didn't need an angel to praise him or any you and me to praise him he created the worlds he created the heavens and the earth and and everything on the earth the sun the moon the stars the fish the animals uh, the trees everything and he said it's good right perfect another word for perfect is flawless that means without any mistake without any mistake just beautiful perfect he doesn't need any correction okay i think there's a reason why god made man on the last day because if he made man on the first day we would start giving advice to god is like no i think you should place the sun just a little bit on the other side you know i think you should put the earth after mars and mars should come first <laughs> and we still do now you know <laughs> Oh, Pluto is not a planet. Okay, but, but you, you get the point, right? When God created the heavens and the earth, when He created you, when He created me, when He created, you know, like um, everything was perfect unless sin entered. Okay, and so when sin entered, it separated us. It put in that flaw, like you know, beautiful white wall. And then there was this black dot. Are you with me? Right. So now that beautiful white wall was no longer just white. It had a mark on it. It was not perfect. It became flawed. Are you with me? And so ever since then, because of one man's disobedience, all of creation, all all means all. Okay, all means all. That's all all means. Okay. All of creation was subjected for corruption. Okay, that means DK. Are you with me? I know when you say DK, D E C A Y, um, DK is it, it's a process. Right? What happens? For example, let's take a um, so when a person dies physically. Okay, this is very important. So when a person dies physically, what happens? I mean, the spirit is separated from them and their physical body is dead. Yes or no? Yes, no? <laughs> okay. If you have another answer, then something... Uh, yeah. <laughs> so when a person dies, we call it as a dead body, isn't it? Like We, we, don't, we no longer call... You know, a dead body by the name. We used to, it, it's just like a, in few hours' time, we said, are you taking the body out? When are we burying the body? We no longer give it a name. Isn't it? And now what happens sometimes for the ritual or for the ceremony, um, we place a dead body in the refrigerator, isn't it? In that ice thing. Why? So that it will last a little longer. Isn't it? So as soon as death happens, that means a decay process begins. Slowly, gradually, everything is getting rotten. Are you with me? Everything begins to get rotten right? and then eventually begins to smell. right? And when you bury it and then you dig it up a few years later, you just find bones, isn't it? So. What is happening is when sin entered, all of creation was subjected to a process of decay and corruption. Are you with me? We know that the scripture says that the wages of sin is death, right? And so that's the process uh, set in place. And so it was. It is not a very pleasant process. We looked at uh, in Romans chapter eight, nineteen, and twenty-three. Uh, we see Romans chapter 8, verse 19 and 23. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. 
they're all waiting for a revelation, for an unveiling. That's what revealing means, isn't it? Verse 20, for the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. That means all of creation had become subject to corruption, to this process called decay. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Okay. Uh, another verse, uh, what I'd like for us to read, just give me one moment, is uh, 1 Corinthians 15. Let's turn to that if you have your Bibles. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 53 and 54. We read this verse last week, but again, I'm just going through all of this for our benefit. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 53 and 54. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 53 and 54, it says, For this perishable body must be must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. Okay? Um, in your, I'm reading from ESV, uh, so the perishable in your... Uh, What's the translation or version? We must have corruption or, uh, sorry? Corruption, okay, yeah. So for this perishable body, that means corruption, perishable, you know, it will one day go away, must put on imperishable. That means an, a, a body that will not get corrupted. And this mortal body must put on immortality. Okay. The other day when we were studying about the tabernacle of Moses, uh, we saw that the wood that was used to build the tabernacle was acacia wood. In other words, shittim wood. Right? Um, now, of all the woods that God could, could have told the people of Israel to use to build the tabernacle, it could have said, use the teak wood, use rosewood, whatever. But why shittim wood or acacia wood we looked at? Because that wood is a it has a healing agent of itself. It is incorruptible. Okay, and it produces a balm that was used for medicinal purposes, a gum kind of a thing. And so, uh, a termites uh, or all these whatever insects or worms could not destroy that wood. Okay, uh, we studied about it a lot. This is just a sneak peek for those online. Just something that we did. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Okay, let's move on now. So because of man's disobedience, a natural process of decay and corruption set in place. And then, so what was, uh, you know, in Psalm 115, I think, um, if I'm not mistaken, I will get to that in just a minute. God told Adam, be fruitful and multiply, and then have dominion. It means have authority. This is yours. But because of sin, God gave Adam the keys. Adam gave the keys to the devil, and because of which, uh, you know, he uses all um, you know, he uses all his power and authority to oppress human beings. Right. So Acts chapter ten verse thirty eight it says, "How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the." devil for God was with him okay very important to notice that all who are oppressed by the devil right uh, and and his angels take all this demonic work so it doesn't say that uh, Jesus went about delivering all those who were oppressed by God yeah okay um, so again uh, we looked at the now, now maybe not all sicknesses are due to demonic spirits. I'll say that again. I said this last week, but I'll say it again. Not all sickness are due to demonic spirits. Okay? But some of the following that's mentioned in the notes, uh, some of them, not all of it, like incurable diseases, birth defect, deformities, unexplainable diseases, symptoms that get worse after prayer and ministry, symptoms that seem to move around different regions, etc., etc. Those are just five points, but it doesn't stop there. It can go on, okay? But what do we mean but by not all sickness are from demonic spirits? What does that mean? 
man's negligence, right? That's what we looked at. So if not all sicknesses are from demonic spirit, um, that means there's a certain amount of responsibility on us. Yes or no? Yeah. Um, if you keep abusing your body by drinking a lot of alcohol, what is the Sharab character? Uh, <laughs> hmm. <laughs> okay. Oh, I just one quarter. I just want 90, 30 ml every day. Oh, it's 30. Not, I'm not a very regular drinker, Pastor, but I just, you know, a little bit 30 every day. <laughs> um, what, what are you doing? Uh, what is happening? Because your body is already a subject to a decaying process, uh, you're speeding up the process of decay, isn't it? Um, and so you're not taking care of it, and so and then you can't blame the devil. It's like, no, the devil made me drink alcohol. No, 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 no. <laughs> you know, uh, it's the same thing with if you love, uh, if we have no control over our eating, uh, you know, we can't resist biryani. Sure, Akil, <laughs> uh, he's got a biryani business itself. So. <laughs> Uh, or sweets without control, uh, you know, that would lead to diabetes or uh, if you don't have a healthy lifestyle, if you don't, uh, um, we all like to work out, no? We all like the idea of working out. But getting up and doing workout, uh, you know, we all like the idea of going for a jog in the morning every day. But I will sit in this chair, I will close my eyes, I will imagine myself like I'm jogging. Okay, done. <laughs> right? But those are all the natural causes when you don't take care of your body. Right? Uh, if, if, so if I can't... Yeah, yeah, sorry, you were sorry, saying you were Okay, I think that was a mistake. Uh, yeah, you can cut this if you want. I don't need it. All right, sorry, guys. Okay. Um, now, I, I want to share another personal experience is uh, when, what happens when you don't care, uh, when you don't take care of your personal, uh, you know, uh, of your body, especially. Um, is So when I was a teenager, 17, 18, 19, 20, um, you know, because of a certain habits, uh, I abused my voice. Okay, uh, and uh, you know, that means it because of my certain habits back then. Uh, even though I have stopped all of that and given up all of that, um, because of the damage that was caused back then, it is very easy for me to lose my voice. It's very easy for me to lose my voice. That means if I, uh, I mean, I could sing for two hours or two and a half hours nonstop. But then now, because of all the damage that was done back then, getting across a one-hour set uh, is uh, challenging. Are you with me? Uh, and so, and again, now, now that I know that my voice is not the same as when I was young, uh, it is up to me to take care of it. And that's why you see me with this flask all the time, is that I keep, you know, <laughs> is I make sure that my vocal cords are, are moist, are, are, what do you say, are hydrated all the time because I have to speak a lot. Um, and if I scream, I can lose my voice. And if I eat, uh, so if I'm singing, if I'm leading worship, say tomorrow morning, Sunday service, uh, not eating too spicy food the previous day, oily food or fried foods, uh, all of that can damage or ice creams or Coca-Cola. <laughs> right now, I can't drink a lot of Coca-Cola the previous night and eat fried food, oily foods, everything, and then expect my voice to function very well the next day morning right because some of us can do that it's like eat everything whatever you want the previous night i'm saying for myself and then the next day morning when my voice doesn't work i can't blame the devil this devil doesn't want me to sing i rebuke you you know <laughs> do you get the point right while not all sicknesses uh you know uh can be attributed to the devil but there are natural causes that you you and i have to take responsibility of are you with me? All this, yeah. You're following, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes.
curiosity just asking this question so on covid 19 would it be like term like a gray area or would it be like a man made thing or uh, demonic uh, this please uncle what did you wake up and decide to ask me the toughest question possible <laughs> I, I don't know. I think it's the most controversial subject ever. No? Like this topic of the COVID-19. Uh, I don't know. But according to me, in my opinion, it feels like a man-made thing um, that just aggravated everything else that is already in. Like I said, everything is in a decay process. And because what happens when we don't take care of it, we're just speeding up that process. It's as simple as that. So, yeah. But that's a man-made uh, Whatever. <laughs> That's my opinion, guys. <laughs> okay. All right, let's move on. Um, hey, are you all learning something? Are you all with me? Are those online? All good? Okay. Great. Wonderful. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay, so we come now we come to this very important question. Uh, it's not a tricky question. It's not a tricky question. Does God send sickness? <laughs> okay, let's answer that question and move on in life. Okay, does God send sickness? 100% no. Okay, let's move on. So, <laughs> uh, I mean, that question should be absolutely clear. Okay, does God send sickness? No. Okay, we'll look at uh, in, in detail as we move on a little further. So, uh, and then, but there are these difficult passages in the scripture that we come across uh, for us to understand a few things, right? Um, uh, for example, the, in... Um, 1 John 1 5 and James chapter 1 verse 17 it says God is light and there is no darkness in him yeah but then there is Psalm 18 verse 9 and 11 that says he made darkness his secret place his canopy around him was dark waters and thick clouds of skies so there's one scripture that says God is light and in him there is no darkness and then there is this Psalm 18, verse 9 and 11, that says, He made darkness his secret place. This is one of the difficult passages. Or uh, there's another a, a passage that says, Titus chapter 1, verse 2, that God is truth and he cannot. God is truth and he cannot? Lie. Yeah, okay. But then there are these other scriptures in First Kings chapter 22 and Second Chronicles chapter 18 that says, uh, Lying spirits came from God. Okay, that's another difficult passage. Um, you know, before you ask me any questions, just hold on. Okay, just hang on. Okay. Um, okay, now there are a few examples of those difficult passages in your notes, and there are more. Okay. So, how do we understand these difficult passages? Like, what do we do to understand these difficult passages? Okay, so just uh, look at me for a second. So, God's will, okay, everybody say God's will, okay, and God's word, and God's deeds. Deeds is what? God's actions, what he does, okay? So, God's will, God's word, and God's deeds will always be consistent with his nature. Okay, consistent means same, right? He is the same yesterday, today, and forever, right? During the time of Abraham, he was not a different God. During the time of Jacob, he was not a different God. During the time of Moses, he was not a different God. And now he's not different. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever, right? So God tells Joshua that as I was with Moses, I will be with you. Right? Although your leader may die, although everything around you may change, everything may seem inconsistent around you, but as I was with Moses, I will be with you. That means he's saying, I am the consistent one. I am the unchanging one. So God's will, God's word, and God's deeds will be consistent 
in his to his nature not up and down okay so if we don't understand these difficult passages but if you and i can understand jesus that is enough can i say that one more time if you don't understand these difficult passages but if you understand jesus that is more than enough why because god's best his best is revealed through his son jesus can i say that again god's best is revealed what is revealed revelation or an unveiling right god's best is revealed through his son jesus okay uh, like uh, one of the pastors says that jesus christ is perfect theology okay jesus christ is perfect theology that means if there is a theology teaching out there that says something that does not look and sound like jesus that means jesus is not wrong the theology is wrong are you with me right so god's best is revealed through his son jesus christ are you with me okay um all right, let's move on. I think we've um, so just to do a quick summary of this section: um, demonic work and men man's actions. Um, God cannot give or bless people with something he does not have. So that means, uh, just to address the question, the source of sickness is not God. Okay, the source of sickness is not God. And due to and and there are times where due to divine judgment uh you know you will you will come across uh verses or scriptures that says uh, you know god turned his face away from his people right god uh, took uh, god gave handed them over to the amalekites have you come across these scriptures it's in the bible right he it says god handed the people of israel over to the midianites god handed them over to the amalekites what does that mean? God, it's not like God took them and gave them, handed them over. Right? It is simply saying that God took away his hand of favor, his hand of protection from of his people, which allowed the enemy to attack the people of Israel. Are you with me? This is very important for us to understand. Okay. So there are times due to divine judgment or divine encounters. Uh, you know, for example, uh, Saul who later is known as Apostle Paul, he goes blind. Right? Now that was what? That was a divine encounter. And he was not blind for eternity, for three days. Yes or no? So, you know, so there's a dif distinction between a divine encounter, divine judgment, where God takes his hands off his people, which permits and allows the enemy to attack and inflict our lives, right? Have you heard of stories where, uh, and I have heard so many stories of, um, you know, these uh, people, some people who practice witchcraft, what they say is, you know, I sent this spirit to attack that family. It went and attacked that family. But when I sent this spirit to attack this Christian family, it could not do anything. There was a wall of fire around that family. Have you heard stories like that? Yeah? What does that mean? That means God is present. He's covering them. Are you with me? Okay. So, um, yeah. Uh, one of the highlights of this section, what I want you to remember is God's best is revealed in the person of... Gee, everybody say that. God's best is revealed in the person of Jesus Christ. All right? Uh, rem always remember that Jesus Christ is perfect theology. Okay, uh, how many times do you see where uh, you know when people who are sick came to Jesus and said, uh, "Let me pray about it and come back to you"? Did Jesus envy say, say that? Jesus healed everyone who came to him in faith, isn't it? Everyone. The Scripture says multitudes came. But you know, there are certain Christians who get stuck up on this story of this person called Job. Yeah. But what about Job? Like, yeah, what about Job? 
I don't believe in the theology of Job. I believe in the theology of Jesus. Isn't it? We will very conveniently forget that Jesus healed multitudes. But we get stuck on this one person. But what about this one person? Okay, so that's another difficult story, passage, character, whatever you want to call it. But again, the foundation of your strong foundation will be strong if you understand and know that Jesus is God's best is revealed through his son, Jesus. What did he do? What did Jesus do when he was here on the earth? And what does he continue to do? He heals, right? He reveals the Father, right? Awake now, everybody? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so let's move on to this uh, next very important section called the basis for ministering, healing, and deliverance. Basis, like the basics of what we need to understand, like the foundations of what we need to understand to serve in healing and deliverance. Okay, the first basis is very simple. Um, it's the again going back to the first biblical reason as to why we need to minister in healing and deliverance because it reveals the nature of God, right? And what is His nature? And what was the covenant name that He gave to the people of Israel? Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Rapha. Thank you. That was the covenant name He gave to the people of Israel, right? That means he is our healer, isn't it? Yes or no? Yeah, that's his covenant name. And I think I've spoken about the word covenant with us, isn't it? What is the meaning of it? <clears throat> um, huh? Okay, so his will, his what he does, his word, his deeds will be consistent with his nature. That means if his if his covenant name is that he's a healer, that means that's who he is. The one who heals is not going to inflict us. Oh, oh wow, let me look at this person, you know. Let me let him let me watch him suffer. He's not gonna do that, right? His desire is to see you walk in wholeness. And that is his nature and it is not just for you and for me that is god's heart to all mankind are you with me that is god's heart to all mankind uh, he wants his children to be made whole jesus did not just die on the cross for christians there were no christians by the way when jesus died they came much later Isn't it? Right? Uh, but we'll get to it in just a second. So, because the next section is beautiful, it talks about the cross. Um, the second basis for ministering, healing, and deliverance is the cross of Jesus Christ. Oh, that wonderful cross of Jesus Christ. Uh, one of my favorite hymns is uh, Oh, that wondrous cross. Have you heard of it? If not, um, there's another old hymn called uh, The Old Rugged Cross. Uh, it's a very old English hymn. Uh, it says, On a hill far away, there stood an old rugged cross. Okay. If you haven't, you should. It's a beautiful hymn, hundreds of years old. Um, where will you and I be if not for the cross of Jesus Christ? We need to pause as Bible college students and as Christians, uh, people who go to church every week, um, it is possible for us to lose the wonder of the cross. It is possible for us to take the cross for granted. Are you with me? Um, what will keep your love and that fire for God alive 
is that you have not forgotten from what he saved you from and what cost God to save us from. Right? It's like that song, Here I Am to Worship, the bridge that says, I will never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. Isn't it? Right? Um, so the second basis or the basic for us to serve in healing and deliverance is the cross of Jesus Christ. Prophet Isaiah, who is known as the prophet of prophets, okay, uh, he's known as the prophet of prophets. Almost 800 years ago, 800 years before Jesus, talks about the cross from Isaiah chapter 52 onwards, halfway through 52 verse 13, and the whole chapter of Isaiah 53, he's talking about the cross. That's almost 750, 800 years before Jesus. Right? Isaiah 53, verse 4 and 5 says, um, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. I want you to highlight that because in just a minute, we are going to read from Matthew chapter 8, okay, where Peter quotes the same scripture but slightly differently. Okay, I want you to pay attention to this verse. Isaiah 53, verse 4 and 5, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. By his stripes we are healed. Healed. Okay. So it's very important for us, you and me, to notice that it doesn't say that by his stripes we are saved. It doesn't say by his stripes we are saved. Now, if, we, if Jesus just simply wanted to save our souls, he could have just gone directly to the cross. But the stripes that he received was for our healing. Okay, all right. Um, so, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. I'm just looking at your notes. The Hebrew words provide uh, a little further insight for grief. Uh, so, the Hebrew meaning for the word grief is sickness, disease, um, and malady, everything. And the Hebrew word for sorrow is pain and grief. Okay, so one more time, let's look at that verse 4 in Isaiah 53. What does it say? He has borne our griefs and carried our... Everybody, guys, come on, come on, look at that scripture. Okay. He has borne, that means he has taken our grief and he carried our sorrows. Okay. Now let's look at what Peter says in Matthew chapter 8, verse 17. Matthew, uh, Peter is quoting what Isaiah said. But see what he says. Matthew chapter 8, verse 17. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah, the prophet, saying, He himself took our infirmities and bore our sickness. Isaiah writes, He took our griefs and our sorrows. But in Matthew, he's saying, Okay, he bore our infirmities and our sickness and so that's what it really means the grief and sorrow means that he took our sickness that means we don't just pray for healing only over cancer or you know all these major diseases you pray for healing over common cold over viral fever also are you with me <laughs> yes or no okay yeah good so uh, that's one of the basis um for ministering, healing, and deliverance. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. These are all fundamental scriptures that you and I need to remember. Okay? Um, going back to Sunday school days, memory verse. These are all, ha all these have to be memory verses that you have to memorize it. Okay? <laughs> and write it uh, 10 times. Um, 
Colossians chapter 2 verse 14 and 15 says, Having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. Let's slow down a little bit and reread that verse. Having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us. What is it saying? That means there was judgment written for you and for me. Okay? There was? What is the judgment? What's the judgment? Death. Isn't it? It was written. Okay. Joseph deserves death. Akil deserves death. Roshan deserves death. Okay. Komal deserves death. Everything. But what Jesus did? It says he wiped out the handwriting. Erased. Complete. It says that was against us, which was contrary to us. And he has taken it out of the way. Having nailed to the cross. And I love the, uh, the next verse, verse 15 says, Having disarmed the principalities of pow and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. That is on the cross. He made a public spectacle. Public spectacle means what? Embarrass them in public. Are you with me? Okay, um, yeah. It, uh, you please read that verses in the language that you would understand because those are very powerful scriptures. Okay, and just don't read them and move on. <laughs> you know, Psalm 1 says, meditate on the word of God, isn't it? Like, meditate on this word. Okay, read it and reread it. Okay, and then reread it. And the word meditate that was used there is, say the scriptures out again softly right having to sound the principalities and powers so think about it okay all good no all right hebrews chapter 2 verse 14 one more scripture uh, in as much then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood he himself likewise shared in the same that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death that is the devil. Okay, he might destroy one who had the power of death. That is the devil. Okay. He had the power of death and, and Jesus defeated him on the cross. So cross is powerful for us to understand. Why do we minister uh, healing and deliverance? Is because of what Jesus did for us. Amen? <clears throat> Why do we minister to everyone <clears throat> in healing and deliverance? Because the cross is for everyone. Can I say that again? Why do we minister in healing and deliverance? Because the cross is for everyone. Like, no, no, no. The cross is only for me. You know? <laughs> yeah, sorry, guys. <clears throat> The cross is for everyone, and then the blood of Jesus. As if the cross was not enough, he gave us one more weapon. Like, Take it, my blood. Okay, Colossians chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of his love, in whom we have the redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Hebrews 9 verse 12, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, he entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. Okay, The blood of Jesus, it speaks a better word than the judgment. The blood of Jesus is alive. And that's why we partake of the blood, of the table of God, of his communion, right, every Sunday. We all know the story in Exodus 12, I think, when um, people of Israel, before they leave Egypt, 
God tells Moses that the people of Israel are to put the blood of the of a lamb, a spotless lamb, on the doorpost of every household. You remember that story? Yeah. And so when judgment came, it would pass over that household which had the blood, isn't it? That's where we get the Passover from. Is when the judgment of God came, it would pass over the house that had the blood of the lamb on its doorpost. Now, did you notice that when the judgment came, it did not check who was worthy behind the door? When judgment came, it did not knock on the door and said, okay, you know, it didn't do that. It only saw the blood on the doorpost, right? It's the blood of God, blood of Jesus, um, that covers us from sin, okay? Uh, we understand, you know, we very clearly understand that God forgave our sins. We've been forgiven, right? Everybody say forgiven. We understand that really well. We've been forgiven, but we don't understand or very easily forget or neglect that we've been given. We've not just been forgiven, but you've also been given the righteousness of Jesus. Okay, it's very important that we understand that. All right. So the blood of Jesus uh, shed for uh, shed for, uh, for us on the cross. It redeems us. Okay, um, I think we'll stop here because if we go on to the next section, we'll move on. Okay, so let's do a quick recap. We just looked at the two bases for ministering, healing, and deliverance. Basis number one, God's nature. Thank you. Yes. Okay, and uh, the second one, the cross. And in that, yes. we see that the blood of Jesus, right? And, and we also see that his... Uh, uh, in God's nature, we see that his covenant name is Jehovah Rapha. He's our healer, etc. Okay. All right, great. Um, so we'll pause here. We'll take a quick break and uh, we'll resume in the next section. Okay. Thank you.